Hello, everybody out there on YouTube land. Uh, this is Explain It, the podcast with myself, Ingrid Hernandez, and Caroline Kane is going to join us very shortly. Uh, she was having some computer problems, but she will be here with us shortly. Um, today's podcast is really, uh, we continue on the ability to answer your questions. We understand that we've... Um, we really want to be able to have you on screen here, be able to personally ask all the questions that you have regarding maybe some of the things you're going through. Um, <clears throat> Caroline and I actually have a few deals that uh, we also want to make sure you're aware of so that in case you have a buyer or you yourself are a buyer, that we can help you um, get a, do a deal with us. And uh, of course, today I'm wearing my elf shirt. It's very... Uh, festive. Hopefully all of you who celebrate Christmas are having an amazing holiday week. And um, I know Christmas is on Monday, so we really appreciate you joining us. Is that Tanisha Spencer in the comments? Uh, hey, Tanisha. So for the record, if you haven't watched uh, the Landlord Diaries on YouTube, which is sponsored by Furnish Finder, you're missing out. Our great Tanisha Spencer, a good friend uh, of us and uh, and of the shows, uh, she was on the podcast and um, I was feverishly taking notes because I also do midterm rentals. And so, of course, I'm going to listen to the expert that Tanisha is. And you guys can also watch her here. We had a podcast with her earlier in the year. So i um, excited that she's in the comments. Hi, Mr. Nice Kicks 23 um, in the uh out there in youtube land um all right so while we wait for caroline uh please let us know where you're joining us from what part of the country maybe in a different country um and also if you have deals like you know uh, one of the things that we're working through right now again is dispoing some of the deals that we have um i don't only wholesale actually i primarily don't wholesale i i primarily buy um and fix and flip uh, but we do have a couple of wholesale deals that we're ready to wholesale out there um, being creative. Um, so it's, it, if you guys need something to depreciate against before the year ends, please reach out to us. Uh, we absolutely will work to connect you as much as possible to get you uh, a deal before the year end. The year ends. Hey, Mandeep. Hello from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Wonder if you know Daniel Quijano out there. And Carlos from San Jose, California. We appreciate you all out there. Um, it, isn't it so amazing the time um, that we live in where we can connect with people across the United States? Like you, I'm sitting here in my office and I can communicate with folks all, all, over, all across the states. This is crazy. I mean, we it's mostly the states. I don't know if I've seen somebody join us from um, any international land, but that would be cool. Hey, Rob, thanks for joining. Rob joins us pretty regularly. Oh, look at, as I said that, uh, Roshana Glinton is joining us from the Bahamas. How awesome. How's the weather out there? I'm sure amazing. It actually rained today in Arizona. I'm getting my deck redone and so the guys couldn't finish it, but all right, Mandeep already has a question. Have you bought foreclosures? Could I use a PML to acquire it? Um, the answer is yes. I have bought properties that are in pre foreclosure. Um, if maybe that's what you mean, right? Before they actually go to auction, I have not bought properties after they get auctioned on and are in foreclosure. Um, and then the second part of your question, oh, I guess I should put it on here. Could I use a private money lender to acquire it? Um, if you're talking about a pre foreclosure, I use private money lenders all the time to buy my properties. Um, so one of the things I do when I underwrite is I make sure that I can actually uh, leverage a private money lender and pay them an interest payment um, as part of acquiring that property. For example, the Sedona property that I recently purchased that required $50,000 down. I had some closing costs and me, I'm super conservative. So I like to have money in the bank. Um, like at least three months worth or so if I possibly can. Um, and so instead of just asking for $50,000, which is just the down payment, 
asked for $63,000, which put, I think, two and a half months worth of reserves on the side for me, was able to pay the wholesaler and close uh, on the property, like pay the closing costs. So, um, and I'm paying that private money lender 12% because it was such a good deal. It allowed spread for me to pay 12% simple interest per annum, annum meaning yearly. So it's 12% uh, across the whole year, not 12% a month, for example, which you don't want to do that. And I, I can't see how people can truly afford anything like that. But hey, Jessica from Alabama. Um, what? It's 60 degrees in the Bahamas. That's a little too cold. Um, let's see. Tanisha said her last deal was a pre-foreclosure with a private money lender. Yep. And that's the way we like to teach it. So um, we, you know, I think Pace one time said that you're you're a boring person if you can't raise money and use your own money. So, hey, Belen, uh, nice to have you in the side on the chats. Uh, please uh, ask all your questions. Um, we are wearing, waiting for Caroline. Her computer is acting up. Maybe if you guys want to buy Caroline a brand new computer for Christmas, I don't know, maybe, you know, it's right around the corner. <laughs> but anywho. And then Mandeep, speaking of PML, is it standard for an origination fee from the PML? I would say if they're a sophistic, sophisticated private money lender, the answer is yes. So I have a private money lender who I've had a really long relationship with, and he can give me the money in 24 hours. He and I have a lot of trust because we built that trust over the years. Um, and he still charges me an origination fee. So absolutely. I, I, I think if they're sophisticated, they will. Um, if they're just getting into this game and not really sure of their footing yet as a private money lender, um, they may not even know that they can charge an origination fee. So there you go. Oh my God, as I live and breathe. Hello, Ms. Caroline Kane. Hello, hello. I'm trying to get a few more things ready before I jump on here. What's going on, Ingrid? Let me see your shirt. Did you show everybody this sweatshirt? Oh. Ah. It's uh, the elf getting so excited. So we're going to go to the enchantment place uh, this mm. evening. And so I was trying to get ready before the podcast of that. <laughs> we're ready what, to have fun. So what is the enchantment place for everybody that doesn't know? It's in Godstill, I believe. No. Have you been? I have not, but I've seen it. Oh, if I could only get a hold of you, I mean, I would take you with us. <laughs> what are I you doing? Knocking after the, the podcast? What you doing? Um, no, my, so my sister is coming, flying back into town, the one that's visiting from Japan. Uh -huh. So maybe we'll hang out with her. Um, oh, well, maybe you guys can just go to the enchantment place and we can meet you guys there. If she's just up for it, she, it, she's been flying since, uh, 11 AM. So cool. if she's down for it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But so, anyways, I was getting my iPad ready. I'm trying to get my iPad on so I can share it. I've been wanting to try and pop it on here when we get live so it's just mm -hmm. taking me a moment but um ingrid i've been pushing a lot of people over here hi everybody hi hi hi. what's up everyone They're, i've been getting tons of questions and i've been pushing people over here to ask them so mm -hmm. um you already did our introduction if anybody on here is new and you have not already please go holler at somebody you know could get some value we're gonna do some q a we're gonna do some examples of things and then I'm actually going to talk about, uh, well, Ingrid, what are you starting at the new year with Mark? What are you and Mark doing together? And why do you guys do this together to reset your year? Why have you been sober for two years? Oh, okay. Mm. okay. So two years ago, almost two years ago, actually over two years ago, because the very first time I did 75 hard, I failed. Um, I think I failed on day like 33 or something like that. And then I was like, meh, I'll just start again at the new year. Uh, so over two years ago, I started doing 75 hard, uh, which is a discipline program, not like a workout program or a lose weight program. No, it's a discipline program. So if you are lacking discipline in your life, doing something that's super structured like 75 hard is a really great way to reset. Um, I don't in this is my personal opinion. I don't think it's a good long-term plan, but I do think it's a great reset because it really gets you dialed in. And I think for the beginning of the year, it's always like the right time. Now, it also means that my birthday, I'm always doing 75 hard, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, oh, wow. Dana says that he's been sober for 10 years. Um, 
So amazing, Dana. That's great. Uh, Caroline's trying out her her iPad. I see. I see you up there. <laughs> um, so what is 75 hard? Uh, the program consists of every single day for 75 days. You have to do two workouts, 45 minutes each. One of them has to be outside. Um, you have to read 10 pages of a business book. So no fiction. So either self-improvement or business related. Um, you And it, you have to turn the page. So it's not like this audible or electric. I think you I think there's exception for Kindles, like because that's technically a page turner. But it can't be audible. Uh, although a good trick for uh, folks that have ADHD or think they do like I do and you don't really know. Um, you listen to it and read it is another great way to help you with um, any attention issues you might have in, in focusing on reading your book. Uh, you have to take a daily photo of your progress. So you have to be like mostly naked in those pictures. Um, and uh, that is where most people fail because you forget about the little easy details. So think about your business. Think about how you work with folks like those little easy to forget um, tasks are the ones that, you know, are, are, uh, difficult to achieve. So in the 75 hard, it's all the big stone moving ones that people don't forget. And it's the little ones like taking your picture or reading, for example, are the ones that people tend to fail with. Um, and then you also have to drink a gallon of water every day. And I struggle with that one, that, that like my skin gets all nice and supple because I'm all hydrated. But um, I just don't like drinking that much water. I think I, I think I named them all, did I? Oh, you're on mute. I think you did. Um, I think if you if you guys are curious, you should definitely check out the podcast episode. But that's going to lead into a segue. So I know I do well um, with people that want to interact with me, which is awesome. I would mm -hmm. love for you guys to do the challenge. I'm not going to be doing 75 hard, though. I know you guys are doing 75 hard. The only reason I'm not doing 75 hard and I know that you are in grid is because I get too extreme with it because I am boring. I cut out things. I don't have joy as much anymore. So I'm doing a version. I'm doing a variation of it. So, Oh, one last one. Cause mm -hmm. you just made me think of it. You have to choose any diet, whatever that diet is. And you have to follow it for 75 days and you cannot cheat. Cause you said, you go extreme and you get, you live a boring life. I'm like, Oh, that's right. You have to eat like the same food every day. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, I take the joy out of everything when I do it. So, uh, I've talked about it with my therapist. So this is just, it's a nice little reset for everybody. If you're looking for ways to make more money when I did 75 hard, I just get really focused. I do have diagnosed ADHD. I've been diagnosed since I was uh, nine and it's just, uh, it's the easiest way to explain it is I have like 12 tabs open in my brain at all times. And I can, um, yeah, I, I can bounce I'm around. laughing because I have way more than 12 tabs open oh. right now. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've learned how to manage it, but it's something that's helped me make a ton of money. So I was going to go into, I, I got the iPad out. I've been, I got to find a better way to put it on here, but I wanted us to be able to like break things down and draw on the iPad today with everybody. And then I want to just go over what I'm going to be doing. And I want to invite you guys to do a little book club with us. I actually was just gifted green lights by Matthew McConaughey. So I'm going to be reading that before um, Christmas. So that's not actually part of the 75 soft that I'm going to be doing, but I found that I do. My, have you heard of the pyramid of learning Ingrid? Yes, but let's tell the audience what that's well, about. Exactly. So let me pull up a picture of it really quickly so everybody can see. So for all of you in here, the pure, like my whole purpose is to make my life easier. I don't want to make, uh, whatever I'm doing harder on myself. So let me share my screen really quickly so you guys can all see. And when you're on here, you should be taking some notes, seeing what you can retain and what's in impactful for you. But this is your pyramid of learning. So whenever you hear something, you're going to retain, retain 5% of it. <laughs> There's 12 yeah. windows. Sure. Yeah. She's joining us from the Bahamas. Can you believe I it? I love Roshana. She's awesome. Um, so back into this with our ADD tangent there, 5% of what we hear in a lecture, we're going to retain 10% of what we read. We will retain 20% if we watch a movie, we will retain it. Okay. And then 30% is if you guys come in and you watch a demonstration, you're going to retain 30% of it. Now, once you talk about it, you're going to retain 50% of this. So like, I like to talk about having battle buddies. When you have a battle buddy, you can share 
um, what you're learning, how you learned it, how it's impacted you, um, what you're struggling with, which is really helpful. And then practice by doing seven, you'll have a 75% retention rate. And then if you teach others and you talk about it, which is something that we're really lucky to do on here, you'll retain 90% of it. So what we're going to do in the 75 soft that I'm running, I we're going to be reading the compound effect first as the first book. Then we're going to read can't hurt me by David Goggins. And then we're going to read rich dad, poor dad. I think we should be done with those will be our first three books that we're reading in the challenge, but every week we'll do a little breakdown of what we covered in that book. And what I found, I did this over the summer. I really retained a lot more of the books because I had to talk about it with everybody and get their perspective. So once I did that, it helped me also with my real estate business. So I don't know where you guys are at, even if you're not in real estate, whatever you're doing in life, if you want to be a better partner, if you want to be a better parent, if you want to be more involved, there's little tips and tricks that you can learn from doing this. And then you just feel really freaking confident when you're doing something like this. Like Ingrid said, it's a discipline challenge. You hear any feedback? So, yeah, but when I muted it, it worked. Okay. Oh, perfect. Um, so I can't mute it all the way. I won't let me mute it all the way. Um, so with that, the discipline challenge will help you just get a lot more done and you'll feel, I just like feeling really freaking confident and sexy in my skin. Like nobody can touch me. And Confidence comes through when you're talking to homeowners, when you're talking to agents, when you're talk talking to wholesalers. It helps you all know when you're raising private money. It'll just help you be more successful. So if you guys are down to join in with us, I just wanted to share this little pyramid of learning with all of you so you could be um, on the same page and crushing it. So I like the pyramid of learning. Just This is a great way. I, For me, when I'm reading stuff, I go through and I highlight things that are important. And I actually read out loud because I will retain it more. Because just, I'm a person who will read a paragraph and I was thinking about what I was going to have for lunch. So I didn't even know what happened in that paragraph. So I have to read it over again. Yeah. So the reason I'm, go ahead. No, I'm laughing. Sorry. No, you're good. So the reason I'm bringing that up because I wanted to just share this with everybody and invite you to join. Let me get the, um, here it is. It's right here. So I will share this with all of you so you guys can see it. This is what I'm going to be doing for 75 soft. These are my rules. Um, can you read that pretty well? Let's make it a little bit bigger. A little small. Hey, while you're doing that, are you okay if I share the link if folks want to come on the live and ask their questions? Absolutely, guys. Jump in here so we can talk to you and give you some pointers. Um, so this is, and this is in my uh, phone right here. So mine is a little different. So Ingrid doesn't like drinking water. Here you go. You're going to drink half of your body weight in water and ounces every day because I know some people struggled with that. Um, use a high performance planner, use a planner every day. When you write things down, you can retain it a lot more Work out only one time a day for 45 minutes, but you got to bust your butt in that workout. You must get 10,000 steps. There you go. Like you got the planner. You must get 10,000 steps in that day. I'm actually going, uh, at 15,000 steps every day, but I wanted to make this attainable for everyone. One day a week must be a yoga or stretching day. I saw that you did your little workout at one tribe. Um, and you will learn that David Goggins almost died because he was wound up so tight and he was not stretching. If you look at a lot of bodybuilders, they get a lot of injuries because they're super tight. Um, read 10 pages of a self-help book every day. Uh, and you can, you have to read it. No audiobooks. You can read the audio or listen to the audiobook while you're reading, which is what I do. Pick a way of eating and sticking with it. So I'm thinking paleo. And then this is where mine has a little bit of grace where Ingrid's will not with the 75 hard. One treat, a dessert or a cheat a week. And then I don't drink, but if you guys wanted to, I added this for the other people. If you drink, you can only drink at social occasions, two drinks max. And this actually, I was thinking this might even be hard, Ingrid, because you have to remember, I made it so you just take a picture on day one and day 38 and day 75. You might forget about day 38, which will be tough. So making sure you just take a picture, you can see the difference in your body. And then every day you got to post about your completion. And then these are the books we're going to be reading. Can't hurt me. Uh, and then the real thing is, how you do anything is how you do everything. And this is just a nice little reset at the beginning of the year going into 2024, which I cannot believe we're going into. Man, life goes fast as an adult. Um, but I like to write my intentions down. I have my vision board where I can see it. I use the high, actually my high performance planners under my keyboard right here, which is under my Instagram camera. Um, why are you doing what you're doing? What do you want out of this? So I'm going to ask everybody that's on here, because I know we got uh, quite a few people. What is something that like, if you could imagine the best version of yourself, okay, you have the rental properties, you're in the shape that you want to be in, you have the money, you're making a difference in your community, you're giving back in ways that matter to you. What does that person feel like when they roll out of bed? 
Are they hitting snooze or are they jumping out of bed and they're ready to conquer the day? Like what is your best day? Why is it your best day? Let me know in the side chat and think about that. How does it make you feel? And once you have the feeling, once you add an emotion to it, it makes it more attainable, at least in my experience. And we want to help everybody just getting to more deals, being more consistent, hitting whatever your goals are. That's the whole purpose of this podcast. But I want to share this with you guys. So I'm inviting you to join in 75 Soft. Um, just tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. You guys can see right there. And we'd love to help you guys out. Um, so Sean is asking just real quick. Yeah. Uh, does one... Oops. Does one page consist of both sides or one? I imagined one. No, I I think of one page as two different pages. Yep. If you're flipping it over, so you have the first side and the other side. If you are, have numbered pages, you're going from page zero to ten. That's ten pages. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Um, but anyways, I wanted to share this just to invite all of you guys to join in if you'd like to, and. I want to interact with you. So there you go. Let's get to the questions now. So thank you guys for listening in on that. Ingrid, take it away. I see you're pulling some questions up. Yeah. Well, I I will say, you know, this gal is a super committed person. So I definitely recommend joining. Um, I I would assume we want them all to go to the Facebook group um, so that you Mm -hmm. have a sense of community and folks can like post on their, their progress and stuff. Absolutely. So I'll post our Facebook group in the side chat for you guys. It's what we've done on the Facebook group. Um, there it is. It's just explain it with Caroline and Ingrid. You guys can find it. It's on our link trees. You can scan this link tree and get in there. Um, but we talked about it all last time when we did the 75 uh, soft before. So yep. this is the group. I will invite people over. I will invite you guys and you guys can bounce in. Just make sure you answer all of the questions to join. So yep. Take it away. All right. So Rob asks, are all the leads you sent from a few weeks ago? Because again, we gave away free data. um, Pre foreclosure. I've made some calls, but wanted to double check before I make more. Um, If you guys watched the podcast while we were pulling that data, we did two types of data points. One was pre foreclosure and then the other was expired. So it's a mix of both. Um, And to be honest with you, like I just go after it. Like I, I don't, dictate how I got that leader, whatnot, other than if I'm doing any sort of serious data stacking, right? So um, don't let the what kind of data did we send you uh, deter you from calling. Uh, The only time it really, really matters, in my opinion, is when you're stacking multiple panes, because then you'll have way more motivated sellers. Um, But anywho, that's my personal opinion. All right. And let's see here. I, I saw Tommy said the data. All that matters about the data, guys, is that you're calling it. Yeah. Just call it and don't quit. As long as you're consistent, you're going to win. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to answer one more side chat before we get to Patrick, who is in our waiting room for our studio. Uh, Tamisa Powers, I hopefully I'm saying your name right. When you do a novation agreement, the seller continues making their mortgage payments. Is that correct? The answer is it depends. <laughs> depends on what you negotiate. You can negotiate that they continue making those payments. So um, it all depends on who you're listening to about novations as well, because they might strictly tell you one thing or another. Uh, but novation, in my opinion, is really you're just sticking your third party self into a typical, uh, like a fix and flip scenario or an MLS scenario where somebody's listing the property. Um, I would recommend that if you're going to do an ovation, you better not be putting any money into that house that, that will hurt you badly if you lose it. So mm-hmm. I've never done mm-hmm. I've never fully executed a novation because I ended up having to switch my novation into a subtail, meaning I took over the deed via sub two And then uh, we ended up selling and closing on it uh, because what comes out very dangerously with novations is that a seller could change their mind midway through the process and then give you legal problems uh, in trying to sell it. So usually novations, in my opinion, are your safer bet if you're doing kind of like what we call an MLS concierge. and you really, you're just listing the property, but you're the main point of contact. You have some equitable interest as a novation um, 
as having this novation contract put together. But uh, technically speaking, you haven't necessarily invested into the property. What are your thoughts there, Caroline? I agree with you. I, I would say it's all about the negotiation, what you're doing. Uh, and then we've just been taught not to do novations. Actually, it's more so sub tails. So you have that protection. So everything you said was straight on the money. Um, it all comes back to you guys. This is, I was explaining like, so it's so funny when you explain what you do, or at least when I explain what I do, because I'm like, I work inside of, you know, a mentorship and then I also like wholesale properties and I buy some and, da, 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 and like the average Joe, I, when I was in the military, we had all of these terms and when somebody was not in the military, we'd call them a civilian. So I feel like people are civilians and they're not in real estate because you just don't understand everything. But mm -hmm. um, rereading, you know, the purple Bible, rich dad, poor dad, uh, you need to remember the, when you buy a deal, that is when you're making money on the deal. It has to be deep enough on the entry to win on the exit. Cause they, I was explaining what wholesaling was and they're like, well, why would somebody just, why would somebody buy the deal from you instead of just going directly to the, to the homeowner? And I was like, well, cause their business is fixing and flipping. And the hardest part of this is actually finding deals. And she's like, well, how do they make money? Well, we have to underwrite it. We have to reverse engineer everything to set up them to win. So whenever you're buying these deals, make sure you're getting it deep enough. Whenever you're taking that risk, make sure you're protecting yourself. That's why the sub, the subtail will be more helpful for you. Um, but I know a lot of like people heard Pace talk about innovations and then it's it's crazy watching Pace talk about innovations and like now all these innovation teachers are popping out talking about them. So I would just say, make sure you are protected. Um, Ingrid came over the other day and we were talking about one of my deals where it's taking forever. We are going through the eviction process and we made sure that I have insurance for my private money lender. I have insurance, uh, title insurance on the property when I bought it. Make sure all of your bases are covered. There's nothing worse than being inside of a deal that you don't want to be a part of. And just make sure you're getting it deep enough. So don't just do an ovation agreement because you're like, well, I'm only $10,000 off. Like, make sure it's a home run. Ingrid, oh, you want to get some and by the way, part of the complications with that novation that I did was uh -huh. that there was a, I'll just call it miscommunication about title insurance. Because when you do a novation, you don't have title insurance, by the way. So if anything is found through title when you're selling it, and, you, and if you've spent any money on that house, mm -hmm. who is going to be responsible at paying that? So you need to make sure that your documents clearly articulate that if anything is found outside of the parameters of what's been disclosed, that you already are stating like, hey, the seller. And by the way, ours was a $32,000 IRS bill. So Ooh. that wasn't fun. <laughs> Bundle. Yeah. So Tamisi, I hope that was helpful. If you have questions, or you just put the link in the side chat again, come up here and ask us. Yeah, for sure. All right. All right. So we get to Patrick. Let's do it. Let's get to Patrick. Patrick, if you turn your camera on, we'll be able to see you, but take it away. What's your question for us? I unfortunately don't have a camera. That's but okay. I... You can hear your beautiful voice. <laughs> All got? right. So I, I have a question. I was talking to a seller and their agent yesterday. Okay. And they have a mortgage that's we're we're looking at a 32 acre campground. Okay. They have about a million dollar mortgage. Okay. So they're very um, they're and they're very concerned about the due on sale clause. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna jump in really quickly before you go any further. Okay. What is your exit strategy? So my plan is to JV with a developer because at the moment with the state of the business on the campground, you know, it, it needs work to make money, but it's definitely achievable and it will also only make money for the price anywhere in the realm they're asking as a development project. It has to be a development project to make money. So, so here's a, here's a couple of things that will work against you. And uh, honestly, as far as development, I'm not necessarily the expert here. Yeah. Um, but from the discussions I've had with some of my land, uh, land people, I know my, um, and you may struggle to get construction loans or are you already prepared with that part? 
So uh, the last day or so I've been reaching out and talking to people who already do development Mm -hmm. and I've been telling them about the property. It's right now it's an RV campground. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are people definitely interested in that. And there are people who can help us raise capital to be able to develop. Okay. So, so. Okay, good. I was just, just making sure because um, most construction loans require that the land that's going to be developed is already owned. And uh, usually through a seller carry process, so not a mortgage lien, but yeah. a legitimate seller carry, um, they would have to subordinate to that new construction loan. Um, so as long as you've crossed your uh, T's and dotted your I's in terms of how you're going to be able to fund your construction process, then I think you should be okay. As far as the negotiation with the agent on the due on sale clause, um, is this a commercial loan? Patrick? I'm not sure if it's a mortgage on the business or in the owner's actual name. Okay. So you'll want to know that for yes. certain. Um, here's why. If it's a commercial loan, some commercials requ- commercial loans require a periodic financial review. Oftentimes it's on a yearly basis on uh, how they're doing. So because you have that added scrutinization by whoever's lending, um, the best way to buy those prop- those loans, sorry, is by actually buying the LLC. If it's the only, um, if it's the only LLC that owns that property, that does that first make sense? Yeah. So with that, um, would it be if we acquire? So we kind of think of the campground as a business, and it's it works more like a business acquisition, really. So mm-hmm. if we were able to acquire the business. You know, right. but the mortgage the is in the mm-hmm. LLC's name. Yep. And you're doing so clause that is not even an, a valid concern at all. Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they're really concerned about the due on sale clause. So I'm starting to believe that it's not in the LLC's name. Or they don't know any better. So this is that's, where you that's need to be pos- a better that's also true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that whether it's single family, whether it's an RV park, a cemetery. Sorry, I don't know why I came up with that. Um, <laughs> you need to understand what kind of loan does it is does it have? Who is the loan named after? And then that'll inform you on your exit strategy. Because I would love if it's just an LLC that's their only asset, and then I can just buy the LLC. The due on sale clause is not even a thing at that point. So um, those are the best ways to buy loans, in my opinion. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so what if it turns out it's not in the LLC's name? Then you have to know what kind of loan it is. So if it's not in the LLC's name, you'll have to figure out if it's a commercial loan. And if it's a commercial loan, then you really have to dig into the requirements of that commercial loan. Because if you're going to have the bank breathing down your neck every year during their financial reviews, then you're probably at a higher risk of due on sale. If not, um, or let's say those are the circumstances, then I would consider maybe a land contract. um, And we'd have to just kind of iron out what that could look like for you. Uh, So I've been I've been trying to research this particular issue, and it seems like no matter what, there's still a, a good chance that they call the note anyways. Is that uh, that's that's just from me looking this is, around? Yeah, I'm, gonna jump I don't... In. I'm gonna jump in. Just wh- why do they need to sell again? So the owner is in her 70s, she's looking to retire. Um, what are the pain points? She spends a lot of time managing the store there. She doesn't want to manage the store. I think she wants to, you know, she lives in an apartment above the store on the campground. 
Has she yeah. told you this or are you making assumptions here? You said, I think she wants to. Did she say this or you're just guessing? What the seller has told me is that they want to they want to be done with the mortgage. They want to be they want to retire. They want to move out and go buy a house and make money for a bit on uh, you know collecting interest payments on a seller okay. finance deal okay. and then collect a balloon payment in five to seven years. Okay, How so much equity do they have based on what you just said? All right, Patrick, this is a live yeah. show, so we can't go with that dead, that much dead air. <laughs> um, so, well, yeah. Here's why I'm getting up by asking you that question, is that you might be able to do a Morby method, but it depends on mm -hmm. how good their rate is and whether or not that's worth it. That's one. Okay. Two is that um, you can buy uh, commercial loans and commercial scenarios uh, often. In fact, they're more willing to do assumptions than single family homes. So it sounds to me like okay. you need to do some investigative information here on what kind of loan is it? Could you just assume it? Because assumptions are way more easier on the commercial side than single family. So if that's the case, you may actually just be able to assume this and then work out the seller. They were very insistent that the mortgage is not assignable. Okay, so okay, it's a so mortgage. Okay. So I it's, heard yeah, it's a mortgage. So it's not a commercial loan? No, it's a mortgage. Okay. Then you're then then the do on sell clause is just a boogeyman that they're using. It really okay. is. Yeah. And again, first case scenario, you just do sub two deed transfer. And if ever yeah. it becomes a problem, then what do you do? You just move to land contract. That's it. Also known as agreement for sale, also known as contract for deed, because okay. those are all executory contracts. So the the mortgage, the note can still be called. Even Here's the thing. So this, the reason why I'm, a, I'm asking this, Patrick, and I really want to get my iPad to work. I'm still trying to get this to work for you. Yeah. When somebody has enough motivation and they really need help, you don't have this boogeyman. Okay. So, so this is, hang on, wait a second. Let me finish. Okay. So sorry. you're okay. Hey, listen, I get it. <laughs> but for everybody on here, this is a teachable moment. And this is something that you should all write down. The, why do they need to sell? I always go into what's the exit? Why do they need to sell? If you do not have three to five, which is that correct? correct? Three to five pain points, three to five, you have not done a good enough job asking questions. One of my favorite books I've ever read, Asking Questions the Sandler Way. This can help you out a ton when you're talking homeowners. This can help you out a ton when you're going out to dinner. You want to get nicer stuff at dinner? There you go. This can help you out a ton when you're dating, okay? Asking questions. And this is a big thing. When you have enough pain points stacked up on top of each other in any situation with a campground that's a million dollars with 50 acres with a homeowner that has an auction coming up at the new year, hasn't had a job for the last six months, um, has medical bills, blah, 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 kids, all kinds of stuff. When there is enough pain and motivation, we can solve their problem. If they don't have real pro like just saying, I would like to get this, like, you know, I live above this. It's just, I'm uncomfortable. We don't work with people that are uncomfortable. Work with people that are like, oh my gosh, I'm so fat. I'm busting at the seams. I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to be out of breath walking from my my chair to the bathroom or whatever. Like you need to work with the people who are like this. If I do not fix this, I am going to die like this. Like I, this so, like, I'm being, I'm exaggerating here. It's so extreme, but you need, that's how we make money. Don't waste your time with people that would, that are yanking your chain. And you're like, okay, well now I'm daydreaming that this could be a really good business opportunity. If you're, where are you investing? How many deals have you done, Patrick? This would be my first deal. Okay. Okay, this is what I like to say for everybody who's brand new. And I'm first and foremost, Patrick, what freaking go, dude? You jumped <laughs> up on our podcast. You joined us live where you, I can only imagine you probably feel like you can hear your heartbeat in your ears. 
You might be sweating. I remember my first time when I was asking like pace questions and Ingrid questions. I'm like, I don't know any of these. I'm just, I'm, I'm so new. I don't even know what the heck is. I'm just getting hit by everything. So way to get out of your comfort zone and do that. Cause I remember being in that situation and that's why we do this. We want to make sure that's digestible, but don't go for this. I'm going to just tell you this. Don't waste your time on this anymore. Go find people that have three to five pain points that absolutely need to sell. And if they don't, something is going to like, they're going to get a divorce because they got a property with tenants. The tenants are terrorizing them. The couple fights about the property all the time. The mom and dad are never at the kids practices. They want family time. They read bigger pockets and this is not passive income at all. They don't want to do this. Like, Find those kind of problems and get stack some cash. Stack like a hundred grand. So then you can be sitting pretty and you can be the man with all the gold and you can make all of the rules and buy whatever you want. I would not go after this thing. Have you ever owned a business before, Patrick? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't know. That no didn't sound well, too convincing. Well, I just, so I just partnered with my brother in sub two and we okay. just opened three LLCs through Prime. So you, right. So also right now you have projects because they're not producing money. Okay. Yeah. You're in, you're an operator, you're an employee of your business at the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go make some F you money, take Ingrid and I out to Nobu and then let's go do a deal <laughs> with you. But right now you are in, you're right here in the grass. Okay. We want to get you to where you're doing some stuff and you can see over the top. All right. This is, I would let this right now you have a fish on the hook. And you're reeling it in really quickly before the hook is set. You need to let this fish sit on the hook and you need to let it go away so it gets caught on there. And then when you reel it in, they're ready. Okay? Let it go a little bit longer. Let them get beat up by the market. There's not enough pain. There's not enough motivation. When they need to sell and you stay in contact with the agent, this is what Ingrid does all the time, then you can be like, well, listen, you guys really want to sell? Like, oh. You guys are living above the RV park and you don't have running water or whatever the heck they're going to tell you because you've gotten better yeah. at asking questions. You're tired of cockroaches crawling all over you. I'm, I'm ex I don't know what the situation is, but I'm, you need to go through and pepper these questions to them. If I could, then what? How have you guys dealt with this? Why don't you guys, I, honestly, I don't think I'm the right fit for you. You should probably go and reach out to LoopNet and see if anybody wants to buy it from there because... I'm not the right fit. Don't take on more than you can chew when you get started. I have ran businesses. It sucks without somebody operating it. Ingrid is in charge yeah. of a lot of employees at her W-2. It stinks having to babysit people. You have no free time. I, If it were me, and I've only heard a little bit about this, I'm immediately telling you, don't do this. It's, it's too big, too fast. Go do some deals to get started. Ingrid, would you say anything else on this? Ah. Okay, so I'm going to be a slight contrarian. Go for it. Um, be contrary. Yeah. So I would say if you already have their interests, that's great. So the only part where I, I not the only part, but the part that I do agree with Caroline is just keep on the follow up part. Yep. But uh, here's where you can practice asking more questions. So there's obviously some information that we're missing. The good news is it sounds like you've underwritten it to figure out whether or not how would you make money. And yes. if you're going to work with a developer, I hope that developer has experience with RV parks. Because if they do, that is exactly what I would recommend to anybody else. If you've not done the thing that you're trying to do, the best thing you can do to get started is to squad up with other folks who have that experience. So for me, it sounds like you're doing a couple of things correctly, which is one, coming on the podcast and asking questions on like, hey, what do you need to do next? Two is teaming up with a developer who I hope has RV experience, RV business running experience. If not, you should find an operator because that'll be more difficult for you. Um, it it comes with a lot, and the and the reason I I'm I'm sort of not completely on board as maybe this not being your first deal. If you guys have ever heard of Heather Blankenship, and she's super amazing. Um, she's, uh, I think pregnant with her fifth child. I think um, I've heard that name once. Yeah. She's yeah. her very first deal was to buy an RV park. It was a uh, ridiculous millions of dollars that the bank lent to her, but what did it take? It took her sleeping at the RV park on the floor 
Like she had to put so much time and effort. And just so you know, if this is your first deal, this is probably going to be your only deal for a long time as you work to stabilize it because it's such a big endeavor. Like of what I know of RV parks, because they're not just real estate. It's a complete business. Like you said already, yeah. like, there's a retail store in there. there. There's an element of like short-term, mid-term in it. Um, I'm sure you're probably having to bring like, you know, maybe tiny homes or other uh, mobile homes onto the, so, so there's, it's so comprehensive. That's going to take a lot of your mind power. So I think go for it. But I think you just haven't asked all the right questions and you probably haven't teamed up with someone like myself or Caroline to really help you close on this agent, which is probably a missing component in your plan. So, Patrick, where is the deal again? It's in Arundel, Maine. Yeah, you can just say the state like you don't have to tell it's us. Maine. Oh, Maine. right. On. Do you want stuff in Maine? Um, no, but Justin Tumanowski would. So if I read I, Patrick, I see him a lot in the accountability calls, actually. Yeah. So what we're going to do, look now. You can see this is my Instagram name. There's Ingrid's Instagram name, Ingrid underscore Hernandez. She's got a Y in it. Message her. Okay. Maybe okay. she can hop on a call with the agent for you and help you out. And then you guys can sell it to Justin or partner with Justin or something. Or you can just bypass us and you can give us a high five and take a snow boo later and just sell it straight up to Justin. <laughs> <laughs> right on all right i'll definitely send ingrid a message <laughs> hey dude seriously congratulations way to get out there and go making those phone calls keep going the only way you can lose in real estate everybody listen in really quickly the only way you can lose in real estate is if you quit don't quit just keep making the phone calls keep going i'm telling you it's just a numbers game call connect Find problems, solve problems, call, connect, find problems, solve problems, and keep practicing. Come back in here. We'll help you guys out a ton. Patrick, where to go, man? Got anything else before we get over to Gerald? Uh, I think that's uh, all the insight I need at the moment. But mm -hmm. uh, if there's more of these, I'm sure I'll be back. <laughs> every single Thursday, or excuse me, every single Wednesday at 4 o'clock, we go live so on Arizona time. So if you're in Maine, you got to know what time it is. But well, we will be here every Wednesday at 4. Well, that's great because that prepares me for the account accountability call tomorrow in yeah. New England. Nice. You're welcome. So. <laughs> Good luck, right, I'll Patrick. definitely shoot you a message, Ingrid. And thanks a lot, Caroline. Perfect. Of course, Wonderful. All right. We're going to go to the next one. We are going to bring Gerald up here. Gerald, if you do have a camera, you can turn it on. If not, we can just listen to your crispy voice. I I do have a camera, but for some odd reason, it's not turning on. That's okay. Well, we'll just imagine what you look like. I okay. bet you're <laughs> so dreamy. Your voice sounds really dreamy. <laughs> so, so yeah. Well, yeah. So um, I appreciate you both for letting me on here. Uh, I, I do have a few questions. So I'm in this place where I've done a few deals wholesale and I just, I don't know how I feel about running an operation where I'm doing deals every month. I don't really know if like wholesaling is like my cup of tea. I definitely want to buy property now and I'm in the Tennessee market. How do you guys make that transition? And have you been pressured with having to operate like a wholesale machine great. where you are? This is a great question. So yeah. What is your what does your day look like right now? What do you do? How do you make money right now? Uh, I'm a barber. Oh, okay. Um, so what is your experience with real estate? Uh, three years in the game. Um, I've done tons of cold calling, SMS. I'm I'm in TTP. So oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I was in TTP before. Yeah, so Sorry. I've done a bunch of that, <laughs> a bunch of the outreach. And um okay. <clears throat> I partnered with sub two students and uh yeah, that, that's that's really all the experience I have. I don't do fix and flips. Um, really, just the wholesale side. Okay. Um, so, how many deals have you done? Um, seven, and we got two more in the pipeline right now. All wholesale. So you know how to be successful. You're already doing deals, which is great. Way to go. I Thank would you. say, if I were you in your shoes. 
do you want to, so it depends on how you're going to go. Are you thinking of hiring Americans to do the calling for you? Or are you thinking of getting VAs to do the calling for you? I, I have the VAs making calls. I just have two. Okay. So you already have two making calls for you. So the yeah, only thing, yeah. so, I mean, to make your business, I would just keep going. How, what are you averaging each month on these deals? Average. So average per deal is upwards of like eight to 10,000. But I'm not consistent in the sense that I'm like doing deals every month. Last okay. time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is keeping you from being consistent? I think volume. Having to spend more money on marketing. Okay. So here, this is oh, another thing um, that I spoke about with Ingrid the other day. So I was telling her I'm doing something else because I want to continue investing in myself. And uh, it brought up the cost of money. Mm -hmm. And Ingrid was like, man, when should you start? She asked the question, it's a great question, of man, when should you, what point should you decide to spend a certain amount of money um, with the deals you're doing, okay? It was like $20,000, $25,000, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Gerald, and I want to see everybody interacting here on the side chat. This is a question for the entire group. Guys, if I told you that you were going to 4X, we're just going to go with 4, 4X what you're making right now, how and you need to invest your return on investment, your ROI would be 4X what it is right now. How much would you invest? So say you're investing in your marketing right now, $10,000. I know it's a really big number. You're probably not doing that, but we're going to keep it simple for math terms. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I told you, if you continue investing $10,000 and you would get $40,000 for just investing that, so forex it. Maybe you invest even more. How much money would you invest, Gerald, to forex that? Probably upwards of ten thousand dollars. Everybody else, let me see in the side chat. What do you guys think? I'm sorry. Are you saying that I'm already spending ten thousand dollars? No, I'm just saying. No, I'm oh. just giving you an example. So I get the example of you're investing ten thousand dollars, but I'm telling you you're going to forex it. So if you invest ten, you'll make forty thousand. So. If you would just 4X, whatever number it would be, invest a dollar, you get $4 back. Yeah. Invest a million dollars, get $4 million back. How much money would you invest to 4X that? It, it all depends on how much money you have right now. Mm -hmm. Could be. I, I spend about upwards of 2000 2500 a month. So okay, 4X. So, but that, I mean, yeah. if yeah. I'm just, we're just playing, don't, don't okay. take yourself out of who you are right now. Money is not an object. How much money would you invest if you could 4X what you're making? All my money, all the money, all I money. Possibly, think all of money money. I possibly bring up. Yes, exactly. Right. You, I would infinity, so I can get infinity for X. I would mm -hmm. invest ten million dollars if I'm going to get forty million dollars from that. So there's different paradigm shifts. There's different limiting beliefs that we have on ourselves sometimes. And I, I listen, guys. I go to therapy. I do my journals. I get all my stuff down. I'm not perfect mm -hmm. by any means, but I want to invest and I want to be around the people that are doing. I hang out with Ingrid. Cause she's been doing way more deals than me. I talked to Ingrid about her relationship with her husband. They're like one of my favorite, like I do all of these things because I want to, I want to be around the people I want to be like. I want to, I joined the sub two mentorship because I was like, dang, that pace guy is really making a big difference. So mm -hmm. if you think about it in that way, if you are going to end like whatever it's going to be and you're going to go all in and you can get a higher return, Okay, you can the game of cash flow is what I'm thinking. Ingrid's played it a few times. She's come over with her kids. I loved mm -hmm. it when her son played with us. The first time her son played I love with that us, game. Mm -hmm. it's a great game. Okay, but once you understand how it works in the game, you can keep borrowing from the bank. You just have to pay it back, and um, to, you have to pay back the loans at 10. percent Then once her son understood that, he's like, I'm gonna take like the, the last time we played. I think Nate. I see Nate's on here. Nate and Kyle came over, and who was it? Was it was it Kyle? No, it was one of the Trana bros. It was Dylan or Brandon Trana. They took a loan out. They took a loan out from the bank for like a million dollars. And I was like, oh my gosh, like they're, they're on TV. It's going to make them broke on the next spin. Well, they took it out on an apartment complex and somebody drew a market card. And the market card said, if you have an apartment complex, you can sell it for like $5 million. So they took a loan out for a million and they immediately were able to sell it for 5 million. They got out of the rat race and onto the fast track. So there's just so many different ways of thinking. Once we like change the way we think about it, if you have creative time in the morning to get your, let your creative juices flow, it's really cool. So if I were you and you were not getting deals consistently, 
Where are the missing pieces? Are you not doing enough check-ins with your VAs? Are you guys not having enough calls? Do you guys have systems in place? Do you have processes in place? And if you don't, you should go back to our episodes. Rick Sheldon, we need to have him back on our podcast. He -hmm. runs our CRMs, our customer Mm -hmm. relationship managers. We use Open Dispo. Uh, I think you should be able to see it in the links below or underneath us in the description. If not, we'll throw that in after the fact. If you scan this, you can definitely see it. But um, Open Dispo has changed the game. Rick Sheldon has done a really good job. All of our stuff, and he has a system for KPIs or key performance indicators. So you can see, are my VAs making enough calls? What's our connection rates? Um, are we answering everybody? How long does it take from a text message to come in to get a reply to? Where, and you can, my favorite thing, because I'm a visual learner, let me see if I can pull up my CRM mm-hmm. so you guys can see it. One of my favorite things, I don't like freaking spreadsheets, okay? They're great, I understand them. I think Ingrid's more of a spreadsheet person. Straight up, I'm like, what the heck am I looking at? If you are with Trello, we have these little Trello sections. Let me make sure I'm on. There we go. All right, perfect. He gave me a demo account so I can show it to you guys. Um, let's take a look. Beautiful. So I have no leads in here, but I'm going to show it really quickly. Okay. On our demo account and my acquisition agents, I don't know if I can do anything else, if they'll even give me sell if I have any on here. I don't. If you can see this, let's zoom in so you can see I have, if I have a suspect, I can move a person over. So let's just say, let me make a person. I can see where everybody is. I can move one person from a suspect. Once they've made it and I've qualified them, they hit the four people. They need to sell. They have three to five people. They've told me that they're interested. I move them over into active follow-up. So if I had a contact card, I move them from here to here. And then once I have that active follow-up, I set them for an appointment. You can change the names of these. We're going to meet in person on on Friday at three o'clock. I can move them over here. I can see if I need to make an offer. I can see if my offer has been, let me zoom in so you guys can read this. We made the offer, it was rejected. We'll have them in the follow-up. We can push them over to our TC. TC was attempted, but I love this part of it. Um, again, this is a demo section, so you can't see everything, but I can have all my text messages in here. I can control my contacts. I'll have to talk to Rick to get so you guys can see the contacts I have, but this is a demo situation of Open Dispo. Open Dispo is incredible. You should absolutely go back and watch that video that we did. Um, but make sure you have your systems in place. If you have a hole in your boat and you can't find the hole, holy sink. So make sure you're plugging all those holes. My biggest problem um, coming from like the TTP group is that, you know, they push a lot on like cold calls and all that stuff, which is great. I just, uh, I know that my time is more worth spent elsewhere like bringing yeah. in money or bringing in new relationships like yeah. when did you guys feel like maybe the cold calling aspect was it, uh, something that you had to take off of your back straight up i was there's a few episodes on here where i had to come in late or i had to miss it because i was on the phone with an attorney because i had so i had one week i was not able to do any of the prospecting myself and i was a whole one woman show and i was like i need to get an integrator so i got an integrator to work with me you should get somebody when you're at the point of you're too overwhelmed and you do have systems and processes in place because our VAs are. VAs are like, what's my next task? They look at it and they go full force at it. That's the really nice yeah. thing about VAs. So if you're already overwhelmed and you have systems, I would make sure you're, you document what you're doing. Go get yeah. an Loom account. You can get a free one where you can record in five minutes. You got to talk as fast as I'm talking on the Zoom so you can get it because it's going to be really short in those five minutes or $15 a month, 20 bucks a month for Loom and record yourself using your screen so you can have videos for your VAs to copy off of. But when you're at the point of, I need to be doing higher level stuff in the cold, because you know, staff that list, somebody's in pre-foreclosure, somebody who also has been probate in pre-foreclosure, call that list, continue to follow up with the text messages going out. Say, once you're at that overwhelming, I would start doing that. Ingrid, when would you have, I know you have, um, you have a Kyle doing stuff for you. When do you think it's good to outsource the outreach? In, in my opinion, once you have proven that you have some manner of consistency and that you're okay financially to pay that off, like if you like, uh, and only you can be totally like true to yourself. So if you've already captured the skill set to be able to train somebody else on their job, you should be ready to go. I actually think people who um, outsource that too early. They never actually learn. And so they will struggle to teach that Mm -hmm. skill set for that person to be successful. So Mm -hmm. that's the only time you would caution outsourcing that is if you are um, 
if you don't even have that skill set. But if you have that skill set and you know that you are more valuable in another business, outsource it, dude. Like really prove to yourself that you will commit and do the things that are going to be a higher dollar value back to your business. Um, but yeah, cold calling for sure. Have your systems in place so that way you're ready to roll. And just imagine, imagine yourself in that cold caller's shoes or that partner's shoes that you might bring on and they're like, okay, well, what do I do now? Like if you don't even have those things set up and now you hired them for one task and maybe now you're asking them to develop a part that doesn't exist at all, well, that doesn't seem fair. That, that would be my recommendation. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. No, that sounds good. I, I really appreciate you guys' uh, feedback. Document, document, document. Record stuff. Have things in place. Make sure there's enough for them to do. Yep. Does that help? I hope that helps somebody else on here. Um, Gerald, send me yep. your deals. Where are you marketing? I want to buy your stuff. Uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Knoxville, what about like... like <laughs> Uh, what's the one outside of Gatlinburg? I like Gatlinburg. Uh, what's the one that starts at Serverville? Serverville, yeah. Okay. I think I believe that's Knox County as well. I got to double check. Mm, the Bash Bros do, do deals in Knoxville. Yeah. I think they actually have a deal right now in Knoxville that they're trying to do a wrap on. Mm -hmm. I just remember I was in the National Guard and uh, we had to go down to Knoxville and I swear they put us in the barracks that nobody had been in for like 40 years and they put us there so we'd clean the barracks. So Knoxville is just <laughs> dirty in my head. So <laughs> because they just brought us in to clean things. But anyways, oh, yeah. um, dude, also... This is something I was watching. Nita Patel was on Brent Daniels' podcast. I love Nita. We need to get her on our podcast. She was just out here and sadly had to go back really early. Um, she doesn't go after deals that are just like five to ten thousand dollar rips. Her average assignment because she's she does door knocking on pre foreclosures, she, and this is why I'm doing that as well because like I have larger assignment fees coming in. Um, she only goes after deals that are going to be like seven. Her average assignment seventeen to twenty five thousand dollars. So when you're looking at stuff cold call do that still but if you have time dude door knocking mm -hmm. door knocking is what people are not doing they're afraid to do it do the work you'll be successful i appreciate right. you guys so much thank you so much you're welcome thank you, Great all, right. all right so we are getting to the end of the hour how oh about gosh. we talk a little bit about the deals that we have to dispo in case anybody out there needs some last minute depreciation or whatever. I wish I had, you know, I should have done like a little presentation. Maybe for next week, we'll talk about why we like the deal, why we don't like love the deal. I have one that I don't love, but I think it makes sense for a, a more seasoned investor. Hmm. So do you want to talk really quickly about the deal that you have in Maricopa that you need to dispo? Well, you don't have to share the dress, oh. just like, what are the highlights? I'm waiting to get pictures on it. So let me pull it back up so I can tell you. I just, I should, this is what you guys do. I just shot the deal because I knew Ingrid was buying there because Ingrid talks about it all the time. So I was like, hey, you interested in this? Um, it is a four bedroom, three bath house. And the mortgage payment is 2160, I'm going to say 68, even though it's just shy of that. Um, the down payment is going to be the entry fee. Let me rephrase that. The entry fee is forty thousand dollars to get into it, and it might include uh, it might include furniture. They'd have to raise that purchase price a little bit. The interest rate is five and a half percent, and it's on a thirty-year mortgage. And you will have to pay closing costs. So now that I'm reading this, uh, it's going to be more than forty thousand dollars to get into the deal because the buyer will have to pay closing costs. Um, but uh, if you guys are interested, reach out to me. I'm getting those pictures later today. That's what mine's lame. So I mean, it's a deal. But Ingrid, you have pictures and you know more about yours and I'm waiting to get all the rest of my information. So Ingrid, what about yours? Well, here's a few things I like about yours. Okay. Oh, okay. Even though it might not be very obvious. Um, okay. One, it's a lower entry fee. 40K, honestly, in the grand scheme of things is not a lot when you're an investor. Yes, no. you are paying close, closing costs. And in Arizona, you can um, already think about one to one and a half percent of purchase price. So I think your purchase price is probably like three fifty eight or something like that on that deal, or thereabouts, right? Um, that's it, that loan balance. The loan balance is like three seventeen. Is that right? Loan balance is yeah. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So three seven three eighteen plus, we'll just say forty five k. That's what you're doing to get into that deal. But mm -hmm. 
people send me deals like that and their houses are built like in 1968. Mm-hmm. One of the things I really love about this deal is that the house was just built. It was so just built that you can't find pictures online because it's just dirt. That's how new this property is. So that's amazing. And then second, that uh, the monthly payment is below what you would pay in rents for that area. And it's a four bedroom in an area where uh, I know for a fact that I have some um, operating folks who need um, uh, some behavioral health folks who would love to, to rent a property there um, at a good price. So I can already charge a slight premium on that rent on that for that property. So maybe we should buy it, Caroline, but you know, who knows? Anywho, so that those are the things I really like about your deal. What I don't like about the deal is that the long-term rental, if I was to use a private money lender, would have me right there on like the cusp of my rent and my mortgage being too close. However, if you're a more seasoned investor, this is okay because it actually pay you more in depreciation than having to worry about the cash flow, to be honest with you. And again, it's a newer property. So things like a water heater, an AC unit, uh, systems, like all of those things are good to go. So uh, it's a pretty good deal in my opinion. Okay, so I have a I have two properties that are coming on market right now because I fix and flip. So we have a property in Rimrock. It's a three bedroom, three bath property that we, it was a cosmetic flip. And um, let's see if we can go over the numbers. Uh, we are selling that for $550,000. Um, if you guys send me an offer before we put this baby officially as on the market, um, we can just use that buyer's commission to help you pay down your origination point and, or your closing costs. So you 2% right away for you to figure out what do you want to do with that property? Um, uh, why do I love this deal? And we actually, our plan B on this deal is to just refinance it and keep it as an Airbnb because the numbers already rock. Um, not even five minutes away from the property, like literally like across the street from the property, they're setting up the Sedona winery. And so, you know how drunk people or wine people (laughs) love their getaways literally. And there's like six other wineries nearby all within like anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes uh, in Cornville and Oak Creek and all these areas up North in Arizona. Um, and so it, it's definitely um, something to uh, to consider. It's a three bedroom, three bath, and it can actually be split into two units where the front unit is two bedroom, two bath, and the back unit is a one bedroom, one bath unit. Um, Mandeep asked, why would we be uh, dispoing? Um, I, for me, these deals that we're dispoing, it's a mix of, of your portfolio. Sometimes you need a little bit more active income than you need to bring on a property and stabilize. Very similar feedback that I gave Patrick. Like um, it takes brain power. It takes time and effort. So when you're buying a property and you're stabilizing it, meaning you're getting property management, you're recording it with the county that it's a rental, you're figuring out your tenants, you're making sure all your utilities are hooked up. Do you need to furnish it? All this and that, that takes time, attention and brain power away from you doing other things like wholesaling and finding deals for like a fix and flip. So your passive income is not as passive because it still requires your attention. Um, Sometimes it's just easier and faster to just let the deal go and inject your business with some cash. So that's, that's one main reason um, I'm, I was looking to just dispo these deals. Um, The fix and flip for sure, because we own it with another partnership. So um, this was a brand new agent slash investor. She wants to flip Uh, properties. And so we said, Hey, yeah, team up with us. We'll leverage our good credit and our experience with our uh, hard money lender. That way, um, I think what we're paying for hard money is like 10.75 interest rate, where a newbie couldn't get that. A newbie would be probably closer to 15%. So she had to put less down payment and we paid less on the interest because she teamed up with us. Did it cost her on the profit? Yes. But I was the one who had the contractor. We understood what we needed to do, uh, both on the uh, construction side and how to list it. We're actually teaching her how to list. So we're killing two birds with one stone, teaching her some of the investment stuff and teaching her how to be an agent because she joined us in our in our brokerage. 
Um, and then the last deal that we have up for sale. Oh no, I think we have to have two more. I'm sorry. Am I taking too much time? Or am I talking too much? You tell me, no, Carol. Yeah. Okay. So we have another property, three bedroom, two bath, plus a pool and a completely paid for and owned solar. That mm. one is $465,000. Uh, we got that lead from somebody saying, Hey, Ingrid's an agent. Can you go and help them? And so when I went and I talked to the lady, I was like, look, Yes, I am an agent and I can list this boring or I can just quickly buy it from you. and We can close in like two weeks if you'd like. So when I sent her her offers, I sent her four different offers. Here's what you would get if you do a typical sub two creative. Here's what you would get if you do what I'm calling the hunt method creative, where you secure the debt against an, a business instead of the actual property. We were able to pay off more. Um and we could talk about that a later podcast. Uh, the other was a cash deal. And then the other, the last one was listing it. So she went with cash. She went with the cash deal. Out of the four deals, the, of the four offers, the cash had the least amount to her. So when people say price is the most important, it's not. It's not. Like I could have made her more money if she listed it. But she chose cash because she loved the convenience, for example. Okay. Um, and so that property is going to be done being all fixed up by the end of December. I think it's going to slide into the very first week of January. So we're going to be ready to go. Um, and then the last deal we have right now is creative. Um, we're actually, we have three people walking it tomorrow at noon. So if this Ooh. one interests you, DM me. Caroline, maybe you want to come by anyway. It's a five bedroom, two bath property in a non HOA neighborhood in Ooh, Mesa. Love when there's no HOA. <laughs> so here's what I don't like about the deal. Uh, is there a pool? It's, I, saw, I think I saw you and Mark post about it. Is there a pool? There is a pool. Yes, there's a pool. What I don't like about the deal is the down payment. And that yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and pull it up so I can share my screen. Go ahead, keep going. I'm going to try and pull it up. Yeah. So this is a hundred thousand dollar down payment. Um, why so high? Just so people can understand because what's why yeah. is the payment so high? The seller has some very specific debts that he has to pay off, and a hundred K is what's going to help him take that weight off his shoulders. So okay. he can't go lower than that. And the reality is is he's gonna sell it at a slight premium because okay. he is an investor himself, actually. This is it right here. That's it right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so uh, a more seasoned investor would like this deal because they might be a little bit cash heavy. It means that they can use, as you guys may or may not know, this like last year was the last year you could do 100% bonus depreciation. This is the last year you can do 80% bonus depreciation. Next year is 60%. And then depending on who gets elected as president, we might be able to go back to 100 or We'll continue that step down bonus depreciation. So yes, the hundred thousand dollars down payment is my con on this. The pro is that if you buy this buy it this year and you do your cost segregation, um, you're able to cost seg against six hundred and eighty thousand um, dollars for the last year. You can get the most of that cost segregation, which is eighty um, percent. This will cash flow um, as a long term rental even at that 3217 because of the high bedroom count and just the state of the property is really, really nice. Not ridiculous much more, but it, at least it, it, the LTR is higher than the debt service mm -hmm. uh, without taking into account the 100K. So that's like money you've got already have in the bank. Um, yeah. The other thing on um, this one is that you could do a pad split from it if you really wanted to as well. I actually think you could just run a short term rental on it because it has the pool. It has the bedroom count. It's in a very central location that people love to come check out. So I, I think it just has a lot going for it as a short term rental. Uh, yeah. you so, guys? Yeah. Do you have photos of these, this one anywhere? I do. I had, uh, they're, um, You'd have to DM me and then I'll send it yeah. over and give you the address. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. So guys, what, maybe we should start doing that some more. We should start posting our deals at the end of these episodes so people can have the opportunity to see and then maybe ask us questions on how you guys can get started. Right. Or if you guys have deals yourself, let's talk about yeah. what we like to 
the deal and what we don't like about your deal. We want to buy them. Yeah. Send us your deals. So Ingrid, you and I do have something that we need to go over at the end of the night uh, today before we can wrap up. I want to make sure we get that. Um, yeah. Are you, do you have it in front of you? Do you I do. I have it in front of me. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Let me pull it up. All right, guys. Let us know what you think of this. So let me put it up high so it's near the camera. I agree with you. Uh, it's Rosie. I was like, hey, by Lynn. But it's like, oh, that's Rosie in there. She's she's our media manager. She's amazing. Uh, all right. So oh, I'm going to hide it and I'm going to do it again. Let me get it over here. All right, guys. Um, and this wraps up another episode with golden nuggets for your real estate journey. We hope you're walking away with actionable strategies and inspiration to take your investing to the next level. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with fellow investors who could benefit from these insights. For more resources, visit our website and remember to join us next time on Explain It with Caroline Kane and Ingrid Hernandez. Until then, keep raising the bar and here's to your success in the fast moving world of real estate investing. Goodbye and happy investing. Oh, love it. We'll see you guys next Wednesday at four o'clock. Thank you so much. Share this. Uh, reach out to us for those deals if you guys are interested. Ingrid, I love you. Merry Christmas. I love you. Merry Christmas.